This is Job 13 through 16, take three. All right, so this is my third time trying to do this video, everyone. I'm not sure what's going on. I first tried to do it on my computer, and my computer just stopped in the middle of the video. I then switched to my phone, um, and my phone for the first time uh, really just stopped in the middle of the video. But I am um, persistent, so it's Tanya, who is back. Hi, Tanya. Uh, and we are going to try to get this done. So again, I was saying that we are doing chapters 13 through 16 of Job. Uh, we are going to cover a couple of days at a time in an effort to catch up. Hi, Toya. Welcome back. We are going to cover a couple days at a time in an effort to catch up. Um, but also because um, we're only covering two chapters of Job um, at a time. And so um, because of the content um, and how it overlaps, it makes sense that we could do two days at a time. And so today I will be doing Job 13, 14, 15, and 16. And so where we left off in Job 12 was um, Job was kind of responding to his friends. And if you remember, uh, we talked about sort of the pattern of things in Job um, after chapter 3. Um, um, at the end of chapter 3, you remember his friends just sort of, um, uh, at the end of chapter 2, I mean, his friends just sort of sat with him for seven days, right? In silence, Job broke that silence in chapter 3. Um, and from there, we started a pattern. So it's Job, um, his friends um, speak after him. And after each friend speaks, he sort of addresses the friend or addresses God in the presence of the friend. Um, and then um, we are now ending that cycle. So he is sort of responding to his last friend, uh, Zophar. Um, and Zophar, by far... <laughs> was sort of the most direct um, in basically calling Job out and saying, you have sin, don't trip. It's something you did. I don't know why you're acting like it's not. We all know that none of this would be happening if you hadn't sinned. So Job, why don't you just admit you've sinned and then we can get on with our lives, right? It's basically how um, Zophar was approaching it. In chapter 12, um, Job sort of answers that um, by talking about the wisdom and power of God um, and trying to get them to see that um, um, God is more knowledgeable than them um, and that it's ultimately God that makes um, final decisions in any matter. Um, and so they shouldn't assume that just because um, uh, he was going through that that meant that something was wrong or that he had sinned or that he uh, was not inside the will of God. Uh, Zophar went far as far as to say, you know, basically, uh, uh, you out there with the wicked, you need to come on home to the holy people, right? <laughs> um, so we're opening up now with Job 13. Um, and in Job 13, um, um, he kind of goes off at his friends in the beginning. He's getting tired of them. And you'll see more of this as we go on. But listen to verse 2. He says, what you know, I also know. I am not inferior to you, but I desire to speak to the Almighty and to argue my case with God. You, however, smear me with lies. You are worthless physicians, all of you. If only you would be altogether silent. For you, that would be wisdom. So as you can see, it's in poetic nature. Remember, this is a book of poetry. Um, and so he's writing in poetic nature, but basically he's saying, look, y'all trying to act like y'all got some superior wisdom, but the same things y'all know, I know it's almost like Job is like, we went to the same trains, don't act brand new, right? Um, and he said, but you know what? Your wisdom is not even wisdom. It would be more wisdom to me if, if y'all just, you remember that first seven days where nobody said anything? Yeah. Can we go back to that? Um, so Job is, is basically going off on his friends. He's getting tired, right? Um, and then if you skip to verse 7 he says will you speak wickedly on God's behalf will you speak deceitfully for him will you show him partiality will you argue the case for God would it turn out well if he examined you right so now Job is like look y'all all over me because I'm going I'm you know going through 
But if you were going through the same thing that I'm going through right now, would it turn out well for you if God examined your life, right? Why are you trying to tell me that, you know, God is examining my life and punishing me? If God went through your life right now, what would that look like, right? Um, and it's sort of, like, sort of like the same arguments we have now. You know, saints sort of uh, compare each other uh, one to another. And, uh, um, you know, when somebody's, I don't know if you've ever had a situation where you are, you know, all friends with somebody. And then all of a sudden you start going through something and your twin, your friends treat you differently. Um, now, all of a sudden it's like they're so holy and you're so not. When it's like, no, we was all in the same boat, sharing struggles, talking about how I just happened to fall to a struggle, struggle we was, you know, sharing. And instead of picking me up, you dogging me out, right? And that's sort of what his friends are doing here. Instead of picking Job up, they're dogging him out. They're blaming him for being in the situation that he's in in the first place. Um, and we're going to see at the end how that turns out for them. In verse 13, you'll see he says, keep silent and let me speak. So it's almost like they were trying to overtalk Job. You know how when you're in a, a huge discourse with somebody, everybody trying to get their words in. Uh, so Job is like, whoa, 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 y'all had y'all turns. Let's, um, you know, be quiet and let me talk. Um, then verse 14 says, why do I put myself in jeopardy and take my life in my hands? And this is our memory verse, verse 15, chapter 13, verse 15. Chapter 13, verse 15 says, Though he slay me, yet will I hope in him. King James Version says, yet will I trust him. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. And that's sort of the attitude that Job is taking on um, this entire book of Job. Like, Though I'm going through and I don't understand what I'm going through. I don't understand why I'm going through. I don't understand why all this happened to me. But I'm just going to trust God. I'm going to hope in him even in this, right? That's how we've got to get. Even when, and I see Tanya saying, yep, been there. Been in the church a long time and I've had church people treat me like that. But even when we're in that situation and even when our closest friends or, you know, our church congregation turns against us, right? We have to still know that we can trust in God. And in the end, God is going to handle all of that, right? Um, it's going to be a very interesting ending. I'm telling you, hold on to the end. You don't want to, you don't want to wane. It's a very interesting ending. Um, um, uh, more interesting than even the double that he gets back, right? Spoiler alert, right? Uh, more interesting than that. Uh, but listen, you need to understand God's going to handle it. Sometimes we don't understand um, that God didn't just allow um, uh, Satan to uh, uh, do all these things to Job, but he also allowed the friends to say, well, you know, God could have handled it in the middle and said, no, 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 y'all just go home because y'all ain't no good. But he allowed the friends to stay there for whatever reason, right? Um, and in, in my opinion, you know, white tree theology, I tell you every now and then, it's a white tree theology. So in white tree theology, um, I believe it was so Job um, could have someone to sort of uh, bounce his thoughts off of, right? Even if his friends weren't agreeing with him, it, it forced him to uh, introspect himself and to examine himself um, like the Apostle Paul tells us in the New Testament, examine yourself to see if you be in the faith. It forced him to examine himself um, in ways that he may not have had his friends not been there, right? So they served a purpose. And even when it seems like, oh, that, that was just horrible, right? They served a purpose. And the same thing is, it is with you. Even when you're going through and it feels like nobody's there for you. And it feels like nobody's reaching out for you. And it feels like, you know, you going through horrendously by yourself um, um, with people around. Because Job felt like I'm going through by myself even though people are here. You ever been like that? Like by yourself. But you really were by yourself. It was lots of people there. Um, lots of people reaching out for you. But they just weren't connecting to what you really needed um, to be healed from that situation. Because why? Only God can change things, right? Um, so um, respect who's in your space as being allowed to be in your space. Um, and, you know, talk it through um, the same way that Job did. Um, 
And so Job, Job said, though he slayed me, yeah, well, I trust. So he told his friends, look, I understand what y'all saying, but y'all understand that, that, you know, this is not anything that I've done. He viewed it as God slaying him. We know from the first chapter that it was the enemy that was against him. But even still, for Job to be able to make this awesome statement, like, though he slayed me, like, even though I think all these horrendous things came from God himself, I'm still going to trust God. Why? Because there's no other God. Like our God. Um, and then. Um, verse 20. If you skip down to verse 20. You'll see um, that Job finally makes a petition to God. He says only grant me these two things. Right. Um, God. And then I will not hide from you. Withdraw your hand from me. And stop frightening me with your terrors. Right. And so Job is begging. Just it's, withdraw your hand from me. He doesn't understand that it's not that God put his hand on him. Um, it's that God actually took his hand away and allowed the enemy to put his hand on him, which is what happened. But he had no understanding of that. So he's asking God, withdraw your hand and then quit frightening me with these nightmares. Right? I only ask for those two things. Um, and then um, he um, demands of God. Now, this is interesting. Verse 23, right? Um how many wrongs and sins have I committed? Show me my offense and my sin. Why do you hide your face and consider me your enemy? And so now he's demanding, God, show me what I did wrong. Request, you know, he's requesting. Show me what I did wrong. Um, show me my sins. At least, at least if I'm going through because of sin, shouldn't I know what the sin is, right? Um, and so that's the ask of, and God's going to answer that. Uh, toward the end of Job, we will see God's answer to that their question. Um, and then go to chapter 14 and Job is still talking. Um, uh, this is a very familiar scripture in verse 1 of chapter 14. It says, mortals born of women are a few days and full of trouble. Um, the King James Version, which you may recognize more, says, a man is a man born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble, right? Um, and so here is Job sort of lamenting his case again. Uh, he's back to sort of um, uh, 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 comparing uh, the state that he is in to other things that are happening in nature. Um, and so he says, they spring up like flowers and wither away like fleeting shadows. They do not endure uh, do you fix your eye on them? Will you bring them before you for judgment? Who can bring what is pure from the impure? No one. And so Job is sort of um, um, talking about how um, everybody is going through on some um, level. Man born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. Um, but Job is like, but that's not me, right? Um, I'm not the evil one uh, because you can't, you know, get something pure out of something impure. And the fact that I can purely worship God and pure, purely praise him, right? All of these things um, Job is making a case for. Um, verse 5 says, a person's days are determined. You have decreed the number of his months and have set limits he cannot exceed. So look away from him and let him alone till he has put in his time like a hired laborer. Um, so Job, again, he's trying to get God to just, you know, leave me alone. Like, I would rather you just leave me alone, which is what he thinks. He doesn't know that's not really what he wants. Uh, because if God left him alone, he'd never come out of the state that he was in. The enemy would destroy him. Remember, the Bible says um, that um, 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 the enemy, the evil one, has come um, to kill st steal and destroy kill steal and destroy um, we have to realize that so a lot of times when we're going through we just like i give up i give up but when you give up in that situation then you are one more step to uh, closer to destruction one more step closer to destruction because god is um, um there protecting you while you are going through um and so if you're like uh, i can't Never mind. Oh no, this is too hard. And you give up, um, then the enemy is gonna come swooping in like it's time, it's time for to bring in destruction. Because that's all he's trying to do in the first place is wear you down, wear you out. 
He really wants to wear you down and wear you out. You've got to learn how to fight past what the enemy is trying to do. All right. And then um, in verse uh, 14, I'm sorry, in verse 10 first, he says, But a man dies and is laid low. He breathes his last and is no more. And I want to talk about this verse because I wanted to reiterate the fact that Job is thought to be one of the earliest written books, right? Thought to be the first sort of writings of, of um, uh, that were put in the Bible. Um, and so Job did not understand um, the afterlife. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that most of us, uh, uh, most of the Old Testament didn't understand the afterlife because um, Jesus actually, when he came, helped to open up an understanding about what went on in the afterlife. And so Job again here thinks that when you just die, you just sleep, right? Um, um, and he doesn't understand that there's something after that, right? There's something after that. If you um, skip over to um, verse 14, you will hear him talking about it, right? He says, if someone dies, will they live again? All the days of my hard service, I will wait for my renewal to come, right? So this is another, it could be another memory verse. It's really good. But he's like, all of my appointed days, I think in the King James Version, I will wait for my change to come. And so now Job is exploring that idea that maybe there is resurrection, but he's just not sure, right? But he's like, you know what? All of my appointed days, whatever. Remember, he started this off with man has an appointed uh, appointed time. He was like, all of my appointed time, all of my days, all the days that God has gave me, I'm going to wait for my change to come, right? That's how we've got to get as well. We've got to get to the point where we believe in God so much that even in the in the midst of the most horrendous situation, we can believe God that in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, um, I preached a message um, with a word, with one word, God can change everything. Like with one word, God can change everything. Like with one word, like you're going through so dramatically right now, you could wake up tomorrow and things could be totally different. Everything that you were crying about, um, God has uh, wiped away and now everything is joyful. All it takes is one word. That's what the Bible says. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So we've got to understand that God is the one that is in control. And we've got to wait on our change to come. We can't stop believing in it. We can't stop hoping in it. We can't stop praying about it. We can't stop seeking it. We've got to believe that our change is going to come. It's right around the corner. I can't see it, but it's there. My change is going to come. All of my appointed days, I will wait on my change. Then um, if you go down uh, to chapter 15, he starts talking. Um, uh, we go back to one of Job's friends who was talking to him. So remember I told you there's patterns. Really, it's like cycles. It's like cycles in Job, right? It's like Job talks, his friend talks, Job talks, his friend talks, Job's talk, his friend talks, and then starts all over, right? So here's Eliphaz with his second discourse to Job. And if you remember, Eliphaz was sort of the uh, most PC one, right? The most politically correct one. He didn't walk on too many toes. He actually praised Job at first, um, uh, you know, and found some good to actually say about Job at first uh, before he laid into what all of them believe, which is you just need to go and repent because something is wrong, right? But listen to what he says here. Totally changed um, his soft attitude. Now, I don't know if it's because he's so annoyed with how Job has been answering him, or if he heard how his other friends was talking and sort of got strengthened, like, yeah, let's just take it right on. Uh, you know how we do. We uh, When we get around others, uh, we sometimes uh, can speak our minds in a greater way than we can if we was just by ourselves, right? So I don't know if that was it or what, but Eliphaz comes um, strong here. Um, let's read verse 2. Of chapter 15, he says, Would a wise person answer with empty notions or fill their belly with the hot east wind? Would they argue with useless words? 
with speeches that have no value, but you even undermine piety and hinder devotion to God. Your sin prompts your mouth. You adopt the tongue of the crafty. So he just really just, now remember, they there to comfort Job. And now it just got real. It's like, this is a real fight, y'all. It's like, uh-uh, mm -mm, let me tell you about yourself, right? And so Eliphaz is now coming hard on Job. Um, look, look at verse 7. It says, are you the first man ever born? Were you brought forth before the hills? Do you listen in on God's counsel? Do you have a monopoly on wisdom? What do you know that we don't know? What insights do you have that we do not have? The gray hair and the aged are on our side. Uh, men even older than your father. Our, our God consolations. Are God's consolations not enough for you? Words spoken gently to you? And so they're going off and basically... Uh, Eliphaz is going off and basically saying, so you think you're going to counsel God? You think you know what God's going to say? You, you, you feel like you're that deep, right? Um, and then he says, you know, we have the benefit of the elders on our hand. The elders are with us. What do you have, right? Um, and because um, nobody was with Job, right? <laughs> um, he was by himself. Um, and listen to how it continues. Why has your heart carried you away? And why do your eyes flash? Now listen, before it was like, maybe you sinned. You just need to repent, um, come back to God. Now it's getting deep, like you done left God. You have walked all the way away. You need to come back to God. You see this progression of things? Um, and none of this is true because we know the first chapter of Job says, that Job was upright, he was blameless, he feared God, and he shunned evil, right? And so we know that uh, the kind of sin that they are attributing to him is not what Job was doing. Um, but nevertheless, if you ever argue with somebody that's just got to prove their point, even way past the fact that it's obvious that their point is wrong, they're still arguing because I gotta I gotta win the argument. It just becomes about winning the argument. It's like what you arguing about, the details of that get lost because it becomes this about finishing the argument and who gonna come on top and who's gonna win the argument. That's sort of how it is with the friends and Job. It's like Job is trying to get them to see his point of view um, and they're just like, no, we already told you how we think. This is what's going down, right? And so um, he continues on to talk about, because um, it's pretty much calling Job out. And he continues on to talk about what, it, what it's like to be a person that's um, hiding from God or a hypocrite, right? Or what it's like to be in God's bad graces, right? Is what he's talking about the rest, uh, the rest of this chapter. But we must remember, and while you're reading this, make sure that you continue to remember that even um, uh, though his friends may be saying some true statements, that the true statements don't make it true for Job if it doesn't apply to Job. And the only way it can apply to Job is if we take into account that Job was blameless, um, that, you know, he shunned evil. That he uh, was upright, um, and that you know um, uh, uh, he was upright man. He was blameless. He feared God, and he shunned evil. We have to take into account all those four things um, every time that we're approaching this, or we'll get caught up in what the friends are saying and be like, "Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right." Now I want you to do your, do that to yourself because at the end, God is going to shed it all down. All right. So um, after um, Eliphaz's second eloquent, um, uh, poetic uh, writings, um, Job begins to speak again. And um, Job is real pissed now, y'all, like real pissed. Listen to what he says. I have heard many things like these. You are miserable comforters, all of you. Will your long-winded speeches never end? What ails you that you keep on arguing? And so Job um, goes off on his friends like, y'all horrible. Like, wait, aren't y'all, when y'all here to comfort me? 
Like, like, shouldn't I be feeling like warm fuzzies by now? Something. Because y'all supposed to be comforting me. Like, you, he, he said, you guys are horrible. If this is what you call comfort, you are doing a horrendous job, right? He says, um, and he calls their speeches long-winded, right? So, they must have gotten up there and, and actually uh, uh, stayed past the appointed time that they were given. He says, you know, you got some long-winded speeches that never end. Um, um, what's wrong with you? Why you keep on arguing when I am telling you uh, what's going down, right? Um, and then, uh, and this was funny to me because we use this now. In verse 4, he says, I could make fine speeches against you and shake my head at you. Wait, I forgot to read the beginning of verse 4. Uh, verse 4 says, I also could speak like you if you were in my place. I could make fine speeches against you and shake my head at you. And so Job is basically saying, it's easy for you to sit on that side and shake your head at me when you're not going through all the stuff that I'm going through. He was like, it would be easy for us to switch places. You want to switch places? I mean, we can, we can do it right now. Let's switch places, right? Um, because you don't understand really what I'm going through. Um, until you are in the shoes that I'm walking and Job wanting him to kind of see what it was like um, just to be in those shoes. But um, that didn't happen, right? And so in verse um, 16, he talks a, a lot about um, how much pain he's still in. And he says, yet if I speak, my pain is not relieved. And if I refrain from speaking, it does not go away. Surely, God, you have worn me out. You have devastated my entire household. You have shriveled me up, and it has become a witness. My God's knees rises up and testifies against me. God assails me and tears me in his anger and gnashes his teeth at me. The opponent fastens on me, his piercing eyes. So you can see Job was going through, and what we really don't realize and, and uh, is definitely a factor, but because it's not directly mentioned here um, in uh, this book of Job, we may forget that Job was a businessman. Job was a businessman. He had cattle. He had, um, you know, all kinds of, uh, of cattle that he was brokering with others. But now those people wouldn't even deal with him. Like all his cattle has died. And you would think he would have some friends be like, here's a horseman or something, right? Um, but no, nothing. Nobody said anything at all. And so not only that, but now Job, who was the source of where people came, now they're coming to him. He ain't got nothing. So what you think they're doing? They're dogging him. And so um, while he's down in his most lowest state, um, that's when... Uh, his haters come, if you will, and begin to dog him out in this low state. And if you listen um, to the following verses, you can see it, right? Verse uh, 10, people open their mouths to jeer at me. They're laughing at him. They strike my cheeks in scorn. They're abusing him and unite together against me. They come together to get Job. He said, all was well with me, but he shattered me. Like everything in my life was going good. And then God just shattered me. He said, uh, he seized me by my neck and crushed me. He has made me his target. So as you can see, Job is, is really, really, really crying out here. But part of his cry out is like, I'm not who I used to be among the people. Um, uh, the people used to respect me. And now they are disrespecting me. Oh, you see that? Uh-oh. The people used to respect me, and now they are disrespecting me, right? Um, and Job is saying, what's going on, right? What's going on? He ends this chapter uh, letting us know that he's just been crying out for so many days, um, just begging God to answer him. Listen to what it says in verse uh, 15. I have sewed sackcloth over my skin. And buried my brow in the dust. My face is red with weeping dark shadows. Ring my eyes. Yet my hands have been free of violence. And my prayer is pure. 
And so Job says, just look at me. I've been doing nothing but sitting here in sackcloth and ashes. He said, I've been sewing sackcloth on me, right? He said, I've been crying so much that the rings around my eyes have given me dark circles, right? He was like, you don't understand um, uh, what's happening to me. Um, um, and even in the midst of everything that's happening to me, um, I have not committed any violence and I have not prayed an impure prayer. Um, Job was like, I am, I am still holding on to my faithfulness to God, even though it looks like, or not looks like, but even though my whole world is falling apart, I'm holding on to what, um, I know will bring me out ultimately. I'm still going to pray and I'm still going to operate in the ways of the Lord. All right, that brings us to the end of chapter 16. That was chapters 13, 14, 15, and 16. Uh, in the next video, we're going to open back up. Um, chapter 17 is going to open back up to Job. Um, and then we're going to move to his next friend uh, who's going to do their second round, which is Bill Dad. So uh, make sure you join us on that next video. It will not be tonight, but it is coming. Um, but until then... You be blessed and know that I love you and God loves you too. In Jesus' name, amen.